गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन बोन डिफेक्ट और गैप नॉन यूनियन इज ऑफन डिस्क्राइब एज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट चैलेंजिंग कंडीशन टू ट्रीट इन ऑर्थोपेडिक्स सिग्निफिकेंट बोन लॉस इज अक्वली ऑफ आइदर हाई एनर्जी इंजुरी और सेकेंडरी टू इन्फेक्शन एट टाइम बिकॉज ऑफ ट्यूमर रिसेक्शन और रिविजन सर्जरी और इट कैन बी इवन ऑफ कंजेनाइटल ओरिजिन a gap non union non union or a critical size defect is often defi defined as a defect which will not heal unless some intervention has been done the other definition is at times it is twice the diameter of the bone at that level two to three times the bone at that level so a bone defect is usually associated with extensive soft tissue damage the blood supply will be an issue this leads to an impaired bone healing and thereby risk a uh, gap non union the incidence in some series has been reported to be as high as 2.5% historically the treatment for gap non union non union was amputation that was 3 decades back however the advantages were then a short recovery period but a significant loss of limb function today amputation is out of question now we try to bridge that gap either with the help of a shortening a docking distraction osteogenesis a use of a vascular or a avascular bone graft or bone substitutes or stem cells growth factor or scaffolds when we see a case of gap non union it is important to evaluate the patient in terms of soft tissue envelop the cover over there assess the infection assess the joint contracture in the and the range of movement in the adjacent joints and also to evaluate the nerve functions in terms of sensory and motor functions so a bone defect can be filled up either by using a autogenous bone graft a allogenic bone graft or a distraction osteogenesis or by salvage procedure like a shortening or as my previous speaker said using a muscular technique so limb a word about limb shortening limb shortening can be done and either in the form of a acute shortening or a gradual shortening with the excision of an ununited bone the sclerotales are removed and we aim to get the two bleeding bones together after appreciating the paprika sign this enables bone healing and th the process of union begins immediately this helps in reducing the size of the soft tissue defect and also enables direct closure of the uh, of the soft tissues this was the x-ray of the patient who had presented us with a non union for almost 4 to 5 years we docked about 4 to 5 finger breadth and got a union over a period of 9 to 10 months so immediate shortening how much can be tolerated at the level of the tibia or humerus one can probably dock 3 to 4 cm acutely while at the level of femur one can dock about 4 to 5 to 7 cm shortly however if the shortening if the docking is more than this one may encounter uh, uh, problems of venous congestion or soft tissue edema the wound may bunch and thereby making the closure difficult at times even tissue ne necrosis or it may even lead to infection gradual shortening of 5 mm per day has also been described and can be done either over a linear external fixator or a ring external fixator the disadvantage of limb shortening is it may cause some degree of bone loss and also may be a cosmetic concern to few coming to the standard treatment of a gap non union which is distraction osteogenesis this was the principle laid down way back at kurgan by none other than elizaro who used a mechanical induction for a new bone formation new vessels form which stimulates biosynthetic activity and thereby bring about intramembranous ossification here a ring external fixator is used a corticotomy is performed one waits for a period of 7 to 10 days for soft callus to appear and then this soft callus is distracted gradually at the rate of about 1 mm per day however this rate may vary depending upon the condition of the limb and the location of the corticotomy bone transport the advantages are high rate of ultimate success good restoration of length and alignment and there is no donor side morbidity also one gets a good functional outcome however the disadvantages are this is a uh, 
it takes a prolonged time. Patient has to have that uh, uh, mindset to withstand that chronic nature of treatment. Also, frequent docking may create problem and at times uh, additional procedure may be required in the form of in the form of bone grafting also complications are multiple in this case coming to the second option which is auto graft here a uh, graft either from the iliac crest ribs or a fibula will be harvested which can be put at the site of gap non union the advantages are this shorten the union time the chances of union are also high and one can use this procedure to bridge a defect from sizes of 5 to 12 centimeters. This was a case who had presented to us. He was a 25 years old male, right hand dominant, had a fracture of both bones of the forearm, for which he had undergone plating of both the bones. He presented to us with this X-ray where the radius plate was already removed three months after surgery because of infection and the ulna plate was there. However, the ulna side wound also got infected and even that plate had to be removed. The patient was given a treatment holiday but this is the deformity which he landed up with and he had a post-traumatic, post-infective radial club hand like deformity. Now once you restore the uh, ulna length, what you will be left with is a gap non-union deformity at the on the radial side. So one can appreciate the clinically the ulna styloid overriding the bony spicule protruding out and an old heel scar and also his range of movements. So what was planned was an uh, incision was taken over the radius, the uh, bones were debrided till we got a good uh, bleeding edges and whatever defect was there that was filled up with a, uh, cement and a plating wall done. Here you can see still the, uh, the length of the radius has not been restored. After a gap of six weeks when MRSA was cultured and uh, the necessary antibiotics were given, the spacer was removed and uh, ulna segment from the opposite side was removed and put in that defect along with some from the iliac crest. And then both the radius and the ulna were plated. This patient went on to unite with a good function. Though you can term this as only a functional range of movement. Similar cases were also treated, which had uh, developed a post-infective gap non-union, and they were also managed in a similar may, uh, way. The non-vascularized autograft can be harvested either from the iliac crest, distal femur, pro proximal tibia, fibula, distal radius, or olecranon. The chances of union are very high. Bone matrix in the form of allogenic graft can also be used. However, it is important to remember this is a bit weak and may not have a good osteoinductive potential. However, it will be available either as a, wound, uh, as a whole bone segment or only as a cortical fragment or a corticocancellous fragment. One may even get a morselized chip or a demineralized bone matrix. However, they lack osteogenicity. They have a less osteoinductive power compared to autographs and uh, they may at times not be available in remote areas and they are known to carry a risk of disease transmission and though the chances of immunogenic response are less. So allograft basically incorporates like autograft but it incorporates very slow. The cells they don't survive. The size and the quantity at times can be a limitation. So. A cortical stud graft can also be used in the form of fibula. They are known to provide a structural support and they revascularize slowly. Coming to the vascularized graft, the common vascularized graft used remains a fibula and this gives a strong structural support and brings about a very rapid healing. The free fibula uh, was described way back in 1975 where a peroneal vessel graft is taken along with it and can be used either in the adjacent bone like a tibia or can be transferred in the thigh bone or in the forearm bones. Various congenital deformity cases have also been very well managed by using this. A known technique to manage a bone defect is a Huntington's procedure where uh, there is an ipsilateral transposition of the vascularized fibula to manage a complex bone segment. However, complications are known in the form of delayed uh, union, non-union, or even shortening. There are methods to do this. 
even a rim irrigate aspiration can be used as a bone graft, which has got a very high potential. Other modalities include a titanium mesh, morpho bone morphogenic proteins, or even electric stimulation. The future remains in stem cell gene transfer and bio uh, and bioabsorbable suture carriers. Uh, uh, I sum up with this last case. He was a 30 years old male who had a uh, who had a childhood infection, and thereby you can see a deformity around the knee joint. However, he landed up with a fracture at the middle third, lower third femur, and this plating was done. However, it failed, and after it was failed, and he was taken up. Uh, once it was debrided, a large bone defect was formed, and so a fibula has to be harvested from the ipsilateral site. And you can see on the fibula has got nicely hypertrophied over a period of four years. So there are various ways to manage a, a gap non-union. The surgeon is the the treating consultant is the best judge to use the method. Thank you. Mm -hmm.